초동대응은 빠를수록 완벽할수록 어, 이렇게 좋다. 그리고 그것에 지금 어, 사활이 걸려 있다. 이렇게 저는 말씀드리고 싶습니다. The daily average of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Seoul is reported as 2.9 despite a series of mass infection crises. 서울시는 시민 모두가 저희들이 그 요청한 대로의 생활 방역을 철저히 해주셨고 확진 환자 유증상이 발생했을 시에는 각 보건소에 적극적으로 검사를 임해므로서 저희들이 효과를 거두지 않았나 이렇게 생각을 합니다. After the switch from the social distancing to the distancing in daily life in May, an unexpected mass infection occurred at clubs in Itaewon. Based on the experience of mass infection at the Guru call center, the city government tracked down the Itaewon visitors working together with the national police agency and the mobile service companies. The Seoul Metropolitan Government immediately introduced the anonymous testing and operated additional walkthrough testing stations. 저희가 서울시에서 내게 드라이빙 스루도 운영하면서 수많은 내신 기자들이 취재 요청이 있어서 중수교회한 쪽에서 지침도 협조가 오거나 그런 걸 많이 제공한 걸로 알고 있습니다. 서울시에서는 6월 초부터 선제적 검사라고 하고 학생이라든지 어르신을 가면에 취약한 분들이 있는 장소를 찾아가서 선제적 검사가 제공한 검사조합입니다. As the number of confirmed cases is rising, Seoul is once again checking quarantine countermeasures against COVID-19 and conducting preemptive virus testings. The distancing in daily life has been further tightened, 
We must stay alert to this unpredictable virus. And they are uh, going through a, a sort of more stringent lockdown than we've had here in South Korea because the South Korean government and I guess the, the Seoul government have dealt with the coronavirus in kind of unique ways, particularly in terms of testing and contact tracing and you know, targeted quarantining, the country's been a, a little bit more successful in keeping the number of cases and the number of deaths down. Well, I think the most important part of, you know, so-called K-quarantine is the contact tracing that needs to take place. In order to contain the virus, you need to know where it came from. And that means that, you know, Western countries, the publics in Western countries are going to need to sacrifice some of their privacy in order for contact tracing to be really effective. That's the biggest lesson that I think uh, other countries and other governments can learn from South Korea's experiencing experience in, in containing the virus. Along with the immediate response of the government, dedication of the frontline medical workers and participation of citizens who practice social distancing made it possible for Korea to be a role model in quarantine measures. Yet, COVID-19 will leave much of an impact on our society. It has changed our daily lives and economic and social damages are also significant. For any possible outbreak in the future, what should we do to prepare? For the world after COVID-19, how can cities in the world cooperate with each other? Now, the world is paying attention to Seoul's next move.
Hello, everyone. We are now on the very last session um, on sports. I am Kyung Seok So. And due to COVID-19, various sports events around the world have been canceled or postponed. 
Major League NBA Premier League have been postponed or have been stopped mid-season, and the world's biggest sports event, the Olympic Games, have been postponed. Despite such chaos, Korea's baseball and football leagues have resumed uh, their leagues, and they have kicked off, however, without any um, spectators. And it is receiving a lot of interest around the world. So we have brought together here those experts in sports and in uh, operation of professional sports. And so we will have an opportunity to talk about how to tackle the coronavirus situation. And uh, right now, uh, this session is being streamed live via Seoul City's YouTube channel. And before we begin, lastly, we would like to ask the participants uh, to set their cameras and uh, to check their network connection once again before we begin. During the um, conference and to the session, we ask you to well manage your microphones. Then now I would like to introduce the participants from home and abroad. First of all, I would like to introduce to you those who will be presenting. Uh, first, we have with us a presenter that will be speaking about Korea's sports response to COVID-19 from Seoul Facility Corporation, a culture and sports division executive director, uh, Young Shin Shim will be speaking about Seoul's sports facility quarantine and disinfection efforts. And next, we will have speaker. We have speakers from abroad. DLA Plus Sports Construction Director Hong Hun Chong. He has numerous experience in uh, designing and constructing sports uh, stadiums in North America, and he acted as the advisor for the 2018 Pyeongchang Olympic Games. We also have Angela Wu from Taiwan. Uh, she will be speaking about Taiwan's sports facility operation amidst the COVID-19 situation. Next, I would like to go on to introducing the panelists. First, from the Tourism Sports Department of Seoul Metropolitan City, Yong Tae Ju. And he is overlooking the Seoul City's sports and tourism related infrastructure, and he is in charge of promoting the health of our citizens. Next, we have Chin Young Lee, the Deputy, Direct, Deputy Executive Director of KBO, and, in Jin, and Chin Young Lee is also an expert expert in operating baseball leagues, and recently KBO has come up with a quarantine manual to respond to COVID-19, and KBO has opened its um, season without guests. And uh, we also have Yeon sang Jo, a federation from the Federation of Korea Football. And uh, the Federation of Korean Football also has manuals for quarantine and is responding to the situation. Next, we have a sports professional baseball commenter, Jung Yeol Lee. He uh, joined LG Twins. He was a player himself for 19 years. And uh, he also uh, worked as a coach for the national baseball team of Korea, and he is an expert in the area of baseball. Next, director of the Technical Education Bureau of the Korea Football Association, and Bo Guan Hwang participated as the national um, a player in the 14th Italian World Cup in 1990, and he is famous for his cannon shoot during the games and during that game. And since then, he has been actively working as a leader in into professional uh, football. Next, we have with us Juan Garcia, project and event manager from WBSC. The World Baseball Softball Confederation, uh, it is an organization that is in charge of baseball and softball and is a member of IOC. Next, we have Mahaan Bashteban Naid, and uh, he's the general manager of the Asian Football Confederation. And uh, during the FIFA World Cup and uh, the Asian Football Federation Asia Cup, 
uh, is overlooked by the Asian Football Confederation. Next, we have uh, from Indiana Polis team and uh, overtime sports and entertainment. Uh, also, he is uh, overlooking uh, various in working in various sports fields, hockey and uh, others. And uh, we have from overtime sports and entertainment Todd and Parker. Thank you. So we have many panelists and speakers with us, and we will now begin the session in earnest. Recently, Korea's professional baseball uh, was kicked off, and it was transmitted broadcast to 130 countries. I'm sure you had heard about this news, and already uh, baseball and uh, football of Korea is being broadcast in other countries, and now golf and uh, other uh, sports events in Korea are being broadcast cast overseas, and so K-sports has become a buzzword in the world sports field. And so we will have this opportunity to talk about the uh, sports sector's response to COVID-19. We will hear the three presentations, and following that, we will have a, a panel discussion. Then first, we would like to hear from uh, Young Shin Shim. She is uh, from the Seoul Metropolitan Government's Facility Cooperation. Uh, Corporation, and she will be moving on to the stage and giving her presentation. Good afternoon and morning. First and foremost, I would like to express my sincere thanks and warm welcome to you all for your valuable time to support our project on overcoming COVID-19. I'm here today to talk to you about the anti-epidemic measures sports facilities of Seoul have taken for safe and operable professional sports games in light of the so-called K-quarantine and K-anti-epidemics. Here you see five big main sports facilities in the pictures. In Seoul alone, there are 811 sports facilities, both indoor and outdoor, covering 25 districts of the city. Here you can see also two very well-established facilities, Seoul World Cup Stadium and Gochok Sky Dome. The stadium hosts soccer games, while the dome is for baseball games and the only dome-type baseball park in Korea. In a brief overview, we can better understand the government's systematic directives and guidelines, along with specific measures taken by Seoul World Cup Stadium and Gochak Sky Dome. In response to COVID-19 outbreak, the Korean government set, out, set strategic guidelines for sports facilities to follow. According to severity of the virus, there are four time scales accompanied by discrete alert levels and instructions on operation of sports facilities. According to the orange alert level set in place from January 27th to February 22nd, sporting events were advised to be delayed. However, exceptions were made if there were difficulties in delaying such events. They were allowed to be played with spectators only if thorough countermeasures against the virus were in place. The dates of February 23rd to April 19th were designated with the highest alert level, meaning that all sporting facilities must suspend operation. April 20 to May 5th was faced with a red level alert Social distancing measures were adopted to resume operation of outdoor facilities. By contrast, indoor sports facilities operation was still suspended due to the inability to properly enforce these social distancing practices. In this period, the Korean Professional Baseball League started on May 5th without spectators. Since May 5th onwards, we have been continuing to practice social distancing in our daily lives. As a result of some restrictions being lifted, some indoor sports facilities, such as ice rinks and swimming pools, have commenced phased operation. For example, the reopening of some indoor facilities prioritized lessons and training while maintaining only 50% of accommodation. On May 8th, the Korean professional Football League began without spectators. 
the number of new cases of the virus exploded at the end of February. This is in line with the highest alert level during which sports facilities suspended all operation. The flat portion of the graph shows that the number of new cases is stabilizing. On February 18th, in the early stage of COVID-19 outbreak, ACL, that is the Asian Fo Football Confederation Champions League, played matches at the stadium. This particular match was between FC Seoul and Melbourne Victory FC. Before the game, we limited the number of the entrance gates from 13 to 6. Also, we installed 12 thermal imaging cameras and installed hand sanitizer stations around entrance gate zones. Continuous disinfection was thoroughly performed inside and outside of the stadium. A medical center began operating in the stadium, and there was also a temporary isolation room for people showing symptoms. When entering, all spectators had to go through a screening process, which included filling out questionnaire and getting their temperatures checked. All spectators were highly encouraged to use hand sanitizer and wear masks. During the game, we displayed response guidelines on billboards and played videos demonstrating these COVID-19 practices. Also, multi-use facilities such as restrooms were disinfected every hour. After the game, we disinfected the entire stadium. We continued taking preventive measures against COVID-19, even when the main stadium was closed. When the virus reached its peak, partly restrictive measures for sports facilities were not enough, and a full shutdown took place for both indoor and outdoor facilities. With the efforts of all the parties involved, we can slowly resume operation of professional sports games, but without fans present at the arenas, which is within the frame of keeping social distancing. Even staff members should keep away from two meters from one another. Now, let's look into the dynamics surrounding the implementation of the countermeasures against COVID-19. We witnessed many different cases of conflict of interest. They can be categorized into three groups. Case one raises three questions. With sports business and public sports facilities management, should we go for profit or public interest? Should we continue the leagues or not? Should we keep the spectators for vivid amusement or do it without spectators for safety? Case two demonstrates a difference in awareness among citizens about whether they have to conform to a required course of action set up by government authorities. This is regarding protocols that include wearing a mask, keeping enhanced distancing, putting social benefit first, and observing other prevention guidelines. Case three shows a split between the central government and local governments. Even if they are all regulatory bodies for health and safety issues like anti-epidemic measures, their respective assessment on the risks and circumstances might not be exact same, which will result in slightly different measures. In addition to conflicts of opposing interest like we have seen, basically there are various parties involved when it comes to putting restrictive measures. In terms of professional sports, you can see that there are many concerned parties at stake. Everyone plays an important role in this dynamic, from the central government, local government, facility management, professional sports organizations, to the citizens. Analyzing public consensus to regulations implemented by the government provided an insight to how life may be post-coronavirus. There are four parts to look into. The first will concern the authorities and institutions serving as headquarters for anti-epidemic measures and their timely decision on choices or measures. The second will address mature citizenship that has led to changes in experience. Next, we'll touch on the management and operation side in the actual application process, provision, and implementation of countermeasure manuals. 
Finally, the future of S prevention, K prevention, and W prevention, which bears ramifications for post-corona. The authorities and institutions have acted decisively in this time of uncertainty. Through timely decisions, the leaders in our communities have stepped up, saving countless lives. Not only has the government saved lives through immediate strategic action, but also through adopting a transparent approach. The government has allowed for the sharing of information and communication to both national and international partners. As the number of new cases lower, and as healthcare pro providers tighten their grip on this uh, break, the citizens in our communities develop faith that we will come out of this disaster strong, along with the information shared with us from local authorities. We, as individuals, recognize the important role we play in active prevention. From a management and operational perspective, Seoul has shaped a short and long-term plan for effectively handling a large-scale outbreak. This plan also provides the opportunity to give feedback on the efficacy of specific interventions. Finally, what insight and roadmap can we draw for post-corona? The first answer will be enhanced policy cooperation among cities and countries. They should be supported by real-time management. As to public sports facilities and businesses, the priority should be given to prevent risk of cluster infection presumed to stay long with us. And now, it's time to talk about what we can provide people with in terms of new experience opportunities. In this regard, I can tell you with confidence that Seoul is all set to cooperate with the world to overcome the coronavirus and greet new era together. Thank you. 네, 아, 고맙습니다. 네. Thank you very much uh, for the presentation. Yes, as a member of uh, Seoul Citizens as a Seoulite, uh, I was very impressed uh, by your efforts. Yes, you talked about uh, how uh, the games uh, were resumed, but uh, without the spectators in, and uh, you, you know, put in so much effort behind that. Uh, so I look forward uh, to your next uh, endeavor. Thank you very much. Next, we will be hearing from Song Hun Jung of DLA Plus. He will be presenting on COVID-19 impacting live sporting events in U.S. You may start. Hello, everyone. I am from DLA Plus. I am Jung Song Hoon. I am working on professionally uh, designing um, sports stadiums and uh, arenas, and I'm going to be speaking about COVID-19 impacting live sporting events in the United States. We all remember the 2011 9-11 uh, impact, and uh, this changed our entire world. For the past 20 years, we are living in a new normal that was created by the 9-11. And uh, sports is an area that was impacted greatly due to 9-11. And uh, safety and security has become an important uh, message and a factor in operating a massive events such as sports events. And in order to up heighten security, we are seeing various security measures taken, such as body checks before you enter into a stadium, and policemen, and including various security guards, have been dispatched. And the venues had to change greatly to accommodate this. Compared to the United States, Korea's safety and security measures in stadiums are weaker. However, if you go to an airport, you can 
can to get a sense of how it is in stadiums and arenas in the United States. So 9-11, of course, brought to us a bit of inconveniences. However, we no longer talk about that as an inconvenience. It has become a new normal for us. Then, as we are undergoing the COVID-19 pandemic, how must sports change and how will sports change? So now I'm going to be talking about how COVID-19 has impacted uh, sports in the United States. The response began starting from March and uh, very rapidly le various leagues were um, canceled or suspended and postponed. And a major event, a sports event in the United States is the March Madness. And uh, March Madness decided to uh, have matches without fans, but then they decided to cancel it altogether. So uh, there were um, cancellations and postponing of events. And we are now having some discussions starting from May about resuming the seasons. However, COVID-19 uh, has a lot of uncertainties related to it. Therefore, it is uh, extremely difficult to predict what will happen. And as you can see on this slide, MBA from uh, May 8th, they opened their uh, training facilities. And for NHL Hockey League, uh, they canceled their season and uh, they are aiming to uh, begin a uh, resume in August. And MLB, in order to open their season in early July, they are making various uh, preparation works, but uh, they are in the process of negotiating because uh, different people have different uh, opinions. And NFA, NFL, uh, they have some time until their uh, kickoff, but uh, they have maintained their schedule. However, they are in the process of making preparations, and uh, this is a big burden for them. I think this applies for other areas too, but uh, amid the COVID-19 situation, it is extremely difficult to resume sports events because the stadiums, we have numerous people uh, that come together to be immersed and engaged in that event. The fans, they do not want to enjoy uh, it by themselves. They want to be more engaged with other fans and they um, move together and uh, they feel a comradeship. Uh, they have a tribal experience. And uh, as you can see on this slide, there's a socializing in these major sports events. And this is an important factor in uh, participating in sports events. And uh, if uh, this uh, is excluded, uh, will they come to see the matches and uh, the games? because it would not be much different from watching the games via their smartphones or, t or on TV. Of course, this is very unfortunate. And after 9-11, uh, there were changes in the security and safety. And uh, with COVID-19, we will be speaking about health and wellness when we talk about sports events. Of course, uh, safety and uh, is the most important. However, just because the venues are safe, will the fans resume and come back if they cannot have the experience that they had in the past? And if there is not an alternative experience that replaces a such engagement, tribal experience, and comradeship and socializing, will they want to come back? And uh, so as we overcome the pandemic, uh, this will become a challenge. So, by having some um, mannequins or dolls seated in the seats to take the place of uh, the games without uh, spectators are leading to resumption. But uh, 
if we can't have safety and health, we need to, to focus our efforts on creating a new experience. But the current uh, situation is that we cannot guarantee security of health and safety. So I'm going to talk more about the short-term uh, responses instead of the longer-term resp responses. So when the stadiums and venues open, how are we going to bring the fans in uh, in a safe way? After 9-11, we had similar experience in the United States. And in that situation, we will have additional tra screening, uh, social distancing and uh, checking temperature, and uh, the entrance and arrival will have to change, and we will need more space for people to enter into the venues. And the uh, picture that you see here is a project that we carried out, that I carried out, and uh, we wanted to uh, allow uh, um, immersive experience, and uh, we would like to hear people shouting and cheering and rooting for their teams, and uh, this leads to a uh, good feeling for the fans. But in the COVID situation, we will have to prevent crowding in the entrance. So the COVID-19 has led to a completely different thought process. In the past, we will have to consider uh, some differences. We will have to have many entrances, and in order to enter into the venue, it will take much longer. Therefore, when the spectators uh, come in, they will have to, they may uh, have to come at different time slots. So uh, it, we could consider operating different times for the spectators to come in. And in the past, the spectators can move around as they please and want to go where they please at, at any time. Uh, but let's say there was a confirmed case, then we would have to trace the movement. And let's say there are 10,000 spectators uh, that were gathered there that day, then we do not want to have to track everyone. Therefore, we would have to divide the venue in sections, and these sections could be operated independently to apply the COVID-19 quarantine and concept in response, and if they would be operated in different sections. And this could be a scenario that we consider uh, as we respond to COVID-19. And on the seating layout, it will, of course, depend on how many people will be allowed to come in. They, the operators are discussing this with um, designers like us, and DLA Plus uh, is uh, considering a system like this. Most of the spectators do not come by themselves. At least two to three people are coming in together. Therefore, we can have seating layouts uh, that uh, enable three, four, and two people to sit together. And if we have this type of seating, then we will only be able to have 20, about 20 percent of the spectators coming in. Of course, we can consider different layouts too. However, through such layouts, if only 20 percent can come in, it would be a very empty venue, then how are we going to uh, create the atmosphere of the past? And uh, if they cannot feel the atmosphere that they felt in the past, will the spectators want to come back to the stadiums? And in this situation, so I would like to give some suggestions. There could be Clustered, we cannot have clustered seating, and we would have to create customized seating situations. And we can also have premium VIP sections, and each section 
will have to have their own uh, restrooms and uh, their stands, uh, FMB stands, so that they can use the FMB stands and restrooms in their own sections and not go to other areas. And uh, there have to be temporary structures. And we will have to have uh, media risers and camera, camera platforms. COVID-19 is leading to so much uncertainty. And due to uncertainties, we don't know if uh, certain facilities need to be put in place for the long term, permanently. Therefore, the responses uh, that need to be put in place need to be modular so that we can respond flexibly according to the changes. When you go to a venue, you are not just watching the games. You want to uh, go and have a drink or some snacks. And in these locations, there has to be safety and uh, preventive measures that are put in place and uh, serving counters and uh, the fixtures have to be easy to clean, for example, and the surfaces have to have antimicrobial finishes, which means that various new technologies need to be integrated into the venues. And uh, the technologies that we had already used will be accelerated in their adoption. And uh, we will need to use various um, technologies to reduce the crowding in the venues. And so such venue technology with uh, COVID-19 will accelerate. And COVID-19 will become a catalyst in accelerating adoption of these technologies. Due to COVID-19, spectator numbers will reduce, leading to a reduction in revenue for the stadium operators and club operators. There will be reduced gate and FMB revenues. And uh, the sponsorship deals will have to be renegotiated in the US and in other countries. However, if you use this as an opportunity, uh, to then to, we can find new uh, ways for improving our stadiums and our sports events and venues. Lastly, according to Bleacher Report, said that. Uh, these words, and I would like to read this uh, in conclusion. Great moments of sports will always be linked to the aftermath of September 11 and how they help to re-establish normal life to American lives. However, an event such as September 11, 2001, should stand as a reminder to us that sports are not that important, but it is life, friends, and family that are the most important things. With this, I will conclude. Thank you. 네, 감사합니다. Thank you very much, Director Chong. We were uh, connecting, and so those who were listening to the Korean would have had to find it difficult to listen to the audio, and so I was relying on the interpretation in some cases because I could not hear the Korean clearly. Next, uh, we will connect uh, to another speaker from overseas. Deputy Director Angela Wu of CPBL uh, will give a presentation of the disease prevention plan and outcomes by Taiwanese professional baseball. Um, hello, I'm Angela from CPBL from Taiwan. We have of our Commissioner Wu Zhiyang and our Secretary General. would like to thank the opportunity um, to share our experience. So um, from April 12th, the Taiwanese Professional Baseball League, we threw the world first pitch. And it's the result of how the Taiwanese people have come together 
to fight the coronavirus. So from um, April, actually, the, we set our opening date at the April 11, but due to the rain, we postponed to um, the 12th of April. So you can see the stadium was uh, without the audience. So um, during the closed door, there's only um, the coach, the player, staff, and also the reporter who can enter to the stadium. So our uh, club is really creative. Um, they started to set some cardboard fans to um, pretend the fans in the stadium. And also the other team, Fubang Guardian, they placed the cheering message from the fans to show the player the fans is like still with them, to cheer with them. And also the Moscow is become really famous in... Next. Next, sorry. Okay, so the Moscow is really um, famous during the the um, the closed door. You can see there's um, the elephant. He is ironing the shirt behind the home plate. So, and also like um, they are dancing and showing their uh, energy through the broadcast. Next. And so we earned a lot of attention from the international media. And also we share this post, there the, all the news to uh, also through our social media to show the Taiwanese people the international attention is focused on us. Next. And what we do in the stadium, so all the visitors enter to the stadium, we have to check their uh, temperature. If it's over a 37.5 degree, then they are not allowed to come into the stadium. Also composing the list of the visitors' name. So uh, all the reporter, staff, even the, um, all the worker, they have to give us the list one day before. So if we couldn't see your name on the list on the date, then you are not able to enter the stadium. And also all the people have to fill out the self uh, report healthy confirmation form. Next. And of course, everybody have to wear their mask in the stadium. Next. So um, after almost one month, we play behind closed door due to the virus. Um, we finally allow the fans back into the stadium for the first time in two games played by uh, F of May. So uh, starting from May of 8th, uh, 8th of May, we allowing uh, 1,000 fans entering to the stadium. And starting from uh, 15th of May, we allowing 2,000 fans entering to the stadium. But we have to um, follow the six required from the CDC. So there is following the social distance, name-based distance six seats, access rule for entry and exit, food sanitation, uh, supervision system, and also how for the infection situation. Okay. So first, the requirement for the entrance, the fans have to fill up their self-report healthy confirmation form. Um, they can download um, the website online and fill up at home, just give it to us uh, when they at the stadium or they can 
uh, fill up in the stadium as well. And before they come into the stadium, they have to um, check their temperature and also hand sanitation. And also we check their ticket with uh, attendance name. Check. And also the other one is the social distance. Um, because the reporter, when they are asking the question to, to the coach and the player, they are usually really close with the player. So we set up the mix zone and give the player or coach the microphone. So that's uh, all the reporter can hear their answer. And um, also the reporter have to requiring the mask with uh, social distance. And also um, from the entrance, the store queue and even the bathroom queue, uh, we place the mark on the floor, on the ground. So um, all the fans, they can keep their uh, social distance during the light up. Okay. And also um, the name base, this named seating. Um, fans has to wear their face mask and um, they have to seek a uh, designated seat that keep uh, a part of base on the social distance guideline. So you can see the picture. They have to see like uh, two seats away from the other audience. Okay, next. And for the entrance access routes, um, we set only two entrance near first base and third base on the first floor. And we place the staff on all the entrance to control the access. So, uh, before they come into the stadium, they have to check their temperature first. If they are over 37.5 degree, they will have to uh, wait until like after 10 minute break and we will check again. But it's, if uh, it's still over above the 37.5 degree, then we will return his ticket or her ticket and send him home or maybe to a hospital hospital if he needed. And if you are okay, your temperature is normal, you will get the ticket or the bracelet is showing your temperature is, is normal. Next. Okay, so uh, you can see the picture we set up of the the routes. So before you enter the station, uh, enter the stadium. There, the sta station they were checking uh, your ticket, and also you have to hand out your uh, confirmation form. But if you didn't bring or you didn't download yet, then you can uh, fill up in the stadium as well, and you will get to the hand sanitizer before enter the stadium. Next. Okay, so the other uh, requirement is the food sanitation. So uh, after, actually from first week, we are not allowing the fans eating in the stadium. But since uh, second week, we submit a new proposal to the CDC and they are allowing, we sell the food, but we couldn't cook in, in the stadium. But, and also it's only limited to the lunch bus, like sushi or bandong bus or maybe sandwich. And also when we sell in the food, food we have to sanitize the wet web to provide together with the, the Benton bus to the people that keep their hand clean before they eating. And also the beverage, we can only sell like the bottle. Next. 
And the other requirement is supervision system. So uh, all the staff have to maintain the order just by uh, wearing the mask and the social distance. So all the fans, they couldn't um, leave their seats only for, they can go to the, like the washroom or um, go to buy the food. But if there's the ball, they couldn't go like pick it. So they have to always sit on their seats. And also we will send a supervisor to every game to supervise the staff to management and see like everything is going well. And we have to report it to the government every, every week. Next. And the final one is hold of infection situation. So how the game our play will adjust according to the, uh, the government policy. So if, um, the pandemic is outbreak again. We will have to stop our, our uh, game immediately. Okay. So um, I think as we continue to combat the COVID-19, all of our disease preve uh, prevention personnel are uh, crucial, especially frontline healthy worker. So that's we are able to join the normal life and also enjoy the baseball. And we hope all over the world, the professional uh, sport can also get normal as soon as possible and bring the people the joy. Thank you. 네, 아유, 고맙습니다. Yes, uh, thank you very much uh, for the presentation. Yes, uh, as you said, uh, you allowed uh, spectators back in uh, much faster than Korea, and, and I look forward uh, to uh, what's happening in uh, Taiwan uh, going forward. Thank you very much for the presentation. So now we're talking about uh, preventive actions and the disinfection measures that we're taking uh, for sports uh, facilities. But before we go on to the panel discussion, we would like to invite the Director General of uh, Tourism and Sports at Seoul Metropolitan Government, Yong Tae Chu, to hear about uh, what Seoul City is doing to uh, address COVID-19. Uh, Director General for Tourism and the sports of Seoul Metropolitan Government. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank all the participants from South Korea, as well as the United States, Spain, Taiwan, and Malaysia for taking time out of your busy schedule to take part in this summit. Uh, as you know, we are experiencing a time of unprecedented hardship in 2020. COVID-19 is changing our lives, regardless of region or race, and the sports is no exception. International sports events, including the Tokyo Olympic Games, as you know, are being canceled or postponed until unspecified time. Even professional league games also are being pro postponed were held without the spectators. Such forlorn situation are disconcerting to us all. Even under such unfortunate circumstances, we cannot predict when this crisis will end. The Seoul Metropolitan Government decided to hold this summit as we will need cooperation and solidarity that transcend the borders to overcome this situation. The Seoul Metropolitan Government has been operating the dispense system step by step, defending on the scale of confirmed cases as they occur. During the early stages of COVID-19, when the alert level was orange, the city held a sports event by taking strict preventive measures, such as measuring body temperatures and keeping a log of visitors. But the 
But when the level was raised to lead on February 23rd, the city closed down all public sports facilities and suspended sports events. Even since then, the spread of COVID-19 continued, and starting March 23rd, the city recommended that private sports facilities seize operation and provided guidelines on the preventive measures against infection in case of inevitable operations. Resulting from such situations, business operation operating uh, within the public sector facilities have been experiencing serious financial difficulties. So the Seoul Metropolitan Government is providing support funds to private sports facilities which have suspended their operation in compliance with the city's policy. And the city is planning to partially reduce rental fees to small and medium-sized businesses operating within the public sports facilities. In addition, the city is providing stimulus checks to self-employed workers and small businesses owners, including sports businesses, as well as employment detention funding. Furthermore, the Seoul Metropolitan Government has high interest in operating professional sports events. Taking notice of the recent international broadcasting of Korean professional soccer and baseball games that gained the world's attention, the Seoul Metropolitan Government plan to establish strict preventive measures against the infection and hope that citizens will soon be able to visit stadiums and watch the games in person as soon as possible. In addition to the participants here today, many viewers around the world are turning into this summit via online broadcast. By sharing these past circumstances, and the know-how in the field of sports, we hope to widely overcome this time of pandemic crisis and have a productive time to prepare for the post-coronavirus era. Thank you very much. 감사합니다. 네, 고맙습니다. Thank you very much for that remark. Uh, you, uh, well, everyone from Seoul City uh, is speaking in English. Anyway, uh, we will now go on to our panel uh, discussion. We don't have much time, uh, but uh, I will kick off uh, with a question. Please limit your answer to two minutes. And if time allows, uh, then we will ask uh, questions uh, back and forth. Now we are talking about uh, baseball, baseball uh, mainly baseball and uh, football. But uh, first of all, my question goes to KBO's Lee Jin Hyung. Of course, I'm a huge fan of baseball and KBO. My question is, when uh, will the audience, the spectators, return uh, for the baseball games? And what's your take on that? Yes, uh, of course, uh, KBO League is uh, preparing um, to allow spectators back in, and uh, we have a task force, uh, and we have the response manual. And uh, what we're focusing in is uh, the players as well as the fans and their safety. That's number one priority. And uh, we're working with the local government to fight uh, the pandemic. That's uh, our number one objective. Of course, you know, all the players as well as the fans, uh, they cannot imagine games without spectators, uh, which is why we want to allow the spectators back in as soon as possible. However, we have to be sure, 100% certain, that they will be safe before uh, they can return uh, to the stadium. And once uh, we have the confidence that uh, we will be able to do so, we will do that. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we heard the case of Taiwan. Aren't you um, um, envious of that? Yes, of course. Um, of course, you know, they first started without the spectators and then they 
gradually increase the number to 1,000 and 2,000, uh, and we want to do that uh, as soon as possible. The central government as well as the local governments are coming together to fight this. And uh, Mayor Park uh, actually visited uh, one of the stadiums uh, in Seoul and checked uh, how you know the progress in terms of infection prevention and control measures taken in the stadiums. And uh, we have to ensure, of course, the safety of the players as well as the fans. Yes, thank you very much. Next, we would like to hear from Chong Yeol Lee. And uh, you go to the baseball stadiums every day, and I'm sure you see the players and the coaches. How is it? How do they feel about uh, the games without uh, the visitors? In professional baseball, without uh, the fans, it is unprecedented. We have never experienced something like this. In particular, KBO has a, a cheering culture similar to K-pop. I have gone to uh, U.S. baseball events and uh, Japan, but uh, the cheering and uh, uh, the culture of cheering in the, the baseball events of, of Korea has become a culture and uh, the players if, and the coaching staff uh, feel that it's very awkward and difficult to, to uh, play the games without uh, the fans and if you go to Kochok Stadium those who are like broadcasting and uh, the commentators comments are even heard by the players because it's so quiet in there and uh, some say question whether this is sports. MPB and Major League uh, Baseball has not resumed, yet KBO has resumed uh, because of the efforts of the coaches and the players, uh, and uh, it is being broadcast uh, to more than uh, 100 countries. And uh, we hope that uh, the players and the staff uh, can uh, work hard to broadcast uh, KBO games with the cheering culture that is similar to K-pop. I think it will be better received. Of course, the fans also would really like to go, but I think that uh, the uh, players and the clubs are also uh, facing difficulties. They do indeed need lots of encouragement, I think. And uh, Jong Yeol Lee uh, mentioned this uh, briefly, that it is being broadcast around the world. Yes, uh, and uh, it was uh, well received uh, by the U.S. fans. Uh, so my question goes to Mr. Tong, since you're in the States. Uh, so how did the Americans uh, receive KBO baseball games? Well, in fact, uh, when KBO was uh, broadcast uh, in the U.S. Uh, for the first time, when it first uh, opened, then you know many of my employees uh, told me about that. Uh, so it was really the talk of the town, and uh, everybody talked about it. And uh, not uh, most of them had not. Uh, watched uh, KBO baseball games before, but now they do that every week. And uh, of course, the timeline is different, so they have to watch that uh, like uh, early in the uh, morning. But then sometimes, you know, they do reruns of the games, so they will watch the reruns. And uh, well, Mr. Lee jong uh, talked about uh, many things. But uh, one of the things uh, that we do in the U.S., uh, well, backstrip uh, is not allowed in the U.S., but it is allowed in Korea. And uh, well, that is one of the differences between the two countries. And. Well, uh, some of the fans uh, who love MLB also uh, love uh, KBO games, uh, but uh, 
Well, it's a shame that we cannot uh, air it uh, everywhere. Yes. So in North uh, Carolina, they don't have uh, MLB teams. Uh, so uh, I heard this news about this Korean team going there. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, you know, you didn't break up this time, so that was good. Now uh, let's move on to Taiwan. Uh, you allowed spectators back in earlier um, than Korea, but uh, of course, I'm sure that you have difficulties uh, having the spectators in the stadium, what would be the biggest challenge? I think the biggest challenge is um, setting the schedule because uh, we was uh, uh, go going to participate in uh, the um, Olympic qualify game in June. And because the pandemic, uh, they are postponed as well uh, the Olympic. So, and also um, the situ situation of the pandemic is changed every day. So we have to change our schedule over and over again. I think that's the biggest challenge for the league. And also um, we have to gain the trust of our government. So we have to prepare our plan really detailedly and perf perfect, uh, really perfect to submit to our government that then trust us we can uh, control all <laughs> the situation. So that I think that's the most uh, biggest challenge for CP Bill. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you very much for that remark. Yes, of course, uh, now you have the spectators in the stadium, but of course it's not an easy task. Then I would like to go on to Juan Garcia, a question to you. You are from WBSC. So WBSC, what is the schedule for you? Uh, this year, and uh, are things going according to the schedule? Okay, for, uh, thank you for having us on behalf of WBSC. Um, and uh, as the world governing body for baseball and softball, uh, our approach obviously it's, it, it englobes over 200 national federations uh, and associate members. Uh, our approach to the pandemic, obviously, it's very general. It involves professional uh, leagues, professional organizations, youth, um, and uh, and different events. Um, the ones that we organize, the official World Cups, Olympic uh, qualifiers, etc. But also those events that are part of our um, uh, members uh, or our members organize. Um, so it, it's been challenging. We had to postpone some 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 events to later in the year. We're optimistic that uh, that we will be able to organize them. Three baseball World Cups. Uh, a softball World Cup and a baseball fight World Cup, our urban uh, discipline. And um, what what our recommendations to our members have been is to uh, that they have to work with the local authorities, um, their respective local authorities, to identify their own reality, uh, their own measures, their their own recommendations. Um, and this is what we're doing. This is the approach we're, we're taking with our respective uh, local organizing committees and their national health uh, authorities. We're monitoring the situation in each of those countries where we're hoping um, to, to organize uh, the events. Um, and, and we're working on uh, possible measures that, uh, that, that could take place, looking, you know, taking the input from our different constituents. In this case, CPBL was uh, the first one to, uh, to go out, as it has been uh, greatly explained by Angela. KBO followed shortly after. Those experiences we're learning from, and we can uh, share with our other uh, constituents and, and, and use ourselves in, in our own competitions. Um, so that's uh, that's our general manage, uh, message. But obviously, uh, as Mr. Jung said, the level of uncertainty it's it's very high. 
therefore makes planning uh, challenging, but we're optimistic um, because in the end, everybody that we talk to, all of our members, all of our athletes, they want to go um, back to, uh, to the field, back to the diamond uh, as, as soon as possible. Um, and it's our responsibility um, you know, to allow them to do that, obviously in a, a, safe, uh, in a safe way. Yes, thank you very much uh, for that remark, uh, Mr. Garcia. You talked about uh, the many projects and programs of WPSC. And uh, is that a San Diego uniform behind you, Mr. Garcia? Yes. Anyway, uh, now moving on to Mr. Todd Parker. Uh, sorry, you, didn't, you hadn't, haven't had a chance uh, to speak, uh, but uh, we will get back to you when we talk uh, about uh, football. So please hold uh, for a second. Now, uh, moving on uh, to the topic of uh, football. Football is uh, one of the most uh, popular uh, sports uh, in Korea. And uh, we have uh, Mr. Cho Yun sang uh, What about uh, the prevention uh, measures that you're taking now. Well, we have opened the games, but, uh, well, because, you know, it uh, involves a lot of physical contact, uh, unlike, unlike uh, baseball. So all the uh, players uh, have to get tested uh, with COVID-19. And uh, only after that, uh, we opened the game. And uh, also, as I said, uh, as uh, football involves a lot of uh, physical contact, uh, we have a, a guideline, a manual that uh, we distributed uh, to the players, uh, like, you know, when they make scrums or, you know, not shaking hands or so forth. And uh, let's say that uh, some uh, players will collapse uh, during the game, but then, you know, uh, your peers uh, are not allowed to help that uh, player out uh, because you have the medical staff there. So uh, we have a very specific guideline uh, for the staff as well as the players. But uh, the biggest challenge challenge is that uh, because uh, football is a tough game, so you lose breath, uh, you know, after uh, you run for like uh, 90 minutes or so. And now um, it's very challenging for the players, uh, but then uh, we know uh, that COVID-19 is a very uh, serious uh, challenge and everybody uh, is on the same page. And uh, we uh, make sure to protect our safety in the stadium. Yes, thank you very much uh, for that remark. So uh, you are going like the extra mile uh, to ensure safety in the stadium. I uh, kind of knew about what was happening uh, in the football stadium, but then I didn't know the details. What about, you know, no tackles or, you know, no uh, fighting, uh, no physical contact or so forth. Yes, of course, um, you know, there are some inevitable uh, physical contact, but then, you know, we try to uh, limit that to the maximum. Next, we will be hearing from Director Bo Gwan Hwang. Uh, for Koreans, so we cannot forget the 1990 Italian World Cup Games and uh, your uh, shoot. Uh, there are rumors that uh, your shoot uh, drew a hole in the net, and uh, everyone wanted to have a shoot like that. And uh, you worked as a coach for the Korean National team and also an administrator in this area. Have you had any experience of uh, uh, playing in a game without uh, spectators? No, I don't have that kind of experience. Yes, it is true that it is an unprecedented situation. As a, a football expert, how do you feel about this situation? The um, Players, uh, when they were preparing for the games during the winter break, they had a very a long winter, uh, so to say, and uh, then we started the K-League, and uh, the game itself, the format is the same, but uh, we don't have spectators, and uh, because we don't have the spectators and the fans, it almost seems as if it's a practice match. and. Uh, because of this uh, format, it, it has become an emotional burden to the players. 
So when they are losing, for example, when the players are losing, uh, you, we know that uh, people can uh, um, do better and uh, they can uh, bring out the best in them, uh, supported by the cheering and the rooting of the fans. But now we don't have that support. And uh, it's, I think, different, uh, emotionally different for the rookies and uh, for the more uh, seasoned players. Uh, there was a difference in how they responded. Uh, and uh, the seasoned players, they are maintaining their same level of performance. And the rookies, uh, they can now have more confidence because they feel that uh, they are not being watched by many people, so they're receiving less pressure. So that's an ironic um, situation. So basically you're saying that uh, the it has become a more leveled playing field for the players, but we would like to have the fans back in our stadiums, right? Yes, we could not imagine a game without uh, the spectators and the fans, so we really would like to see an end, coming to, uh, an end come to the situation so that the players can see the fans again. And uh, since we are on the topic of football, now, uh, moving on uh, to Mr. Todd Parker, are you still connected? Yes, uh, you were also a uh, coach to Indianapolis. Uh, so what would be the schedule of NFL and uh, what are some of the measures that uh, you are taking uh, to prevent uh, COVID-19? Correct. Well, thanks for having me here from Overtime Sports Entertainment. Uh, the NFL has uh, a very good position uh, amongst all the American sports in that uh, they probably have the best chance of completing a full season starting. Uh, recently, it was announced by the commissioner to start September 10th with the Super Bowl, the culminating event uh, in February of 21. Uh, the NFL has also recently announced uh, that their training facilities are open for football staff. Uh, the business staff has already been allowed to come onto those campuses. And in the United States, uh, the 32 NFL teams, by and large, all have massive uh, training facilities in their home market. Uh, the NFL has issued a guideline that none of the teams can travel in the summer. Uh, have joint practices with other teams, but they must confine all of their activities to their home facilities. Um, the NFL is also uh, in an interesting position, as uh, Mr. Jung said, to learn from all of the other sports in the U.S. Uh, as they undertake their own reopening. So we've recently heard that the NBA and the NHL those two leagues will be convening their playoff teams in a single location or locations, plural, to conduct a month long playoff format um, on one campus. So that will be a controlled environment, very easy to manage the uh, medical uh, from one location and contain um, that crowd of staff, media, uh, players and officials uh, in one place. Uh, the NFL, though, um, has uh, allowed each of the 32 teams to work with uh, the local public health officials, uh, as well as the federal guidelines to determine the crowd size uh, at those stadiums. Uh, it's too early now with three months to go to predict if indeed it will be 15, 20% capacity, 50% or even a full house. But uh, the NFL to date has uh, issued um, guidelines um, expecting to have a full uh, complement of fans uh, come September. Uh, but we all know there's so much uncertainty uh, with the coronavirus that uh, you know every week brings new data and uh, we won't know until probably the first kickoff uh, on September 10th with the defending champion, Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, the other interesting thing uh, with the NFL from an economic standpoint, um, the revenue generated from the stadium 
which includes ticketing and concessions and parking and local advertising, accounts for about 38% of the overall revenue in the NFL, which is substantial. So the teams collectively, should there not be any fans, uh, could lose up to $5.5 billion over the course of the 16-game regular season and playoff schedule. So um, that, of course, is secondary to the public health concerns, but it does weigh heavily on the administrators and the owners of the sport. Um, that's all I would say now, other than, um, as Jung uh, had said, the NFL provides almost a medicine for the population at a time when the United States is really uh, staggering from the coronavirus quarantine. And now, as you've been reading, a lot of civil unrest uh, in our country. So the NFL uh, has a giant influence on the nation and provides a real um, healing and unifying experience. So we're all hoping that uh, they can open with a full stadium and uh, provide that necessary outlet and, and healing that this country needs. 네, 알겠습니다. Yes, uh, thank you very much uh, for that uh, remark. And uh, you said that uh, in early uh, September you plan to open the games. Next, uh, we will be hearing from Mahajan Vasu Devan Nar. Uh, you are last to speak, and uh, finally, we get to hear from you. You are head of AFC and uh, the Asia Football Confederation. Uh, Korea is a member, so we have affection toward AFC. And uh, this year, uh, are the like, games in well in good preparation? I hope I, uh, you can hear me. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for having me on. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, I do. Uh, I'm the head of club licensing, and um, I, I, I'm mostly involved with professional football in Asia. And professional football seems to be the most hit uh, because we deal with clubs and leagues. And uh, um, as any other industry, football industry is also very much uh, struck by this the, this little virus, and uh, the humanity is is asked to go inside their homes and hibernate for a while without any uh, football coming in or any live sports available. And I don't think this, this situation can continue for any long. And I think um, we have to find out ways to come out of this hibernation. And, and I congratulate the K-League for, for leading the way for the whole world. It was the K-League who, who came up with the protocols and it was the K-League who showed us that we can still go ahead with live sports um, with social distancing, with, so, uh, with appropriate health protocols. And whenever I encourage others, uh, other leagues to go ahead with reopening, uh, I will always suggest to them that we have to give consideration uh, for the supreme values of, of human health, welfare, and happiness. And that should be our primary consideration, irrespective of, of, um, of, the, of the losses that we are accumulating because of the shutdown. And as you can see, almost all the leagues in Asia, all over the world are shut down. Some of them are planning, um, already came back. Some of them are having plans to come back. And uh, we are working with um, uh, other uh, sports also to find out how, how we can better resume. And in, 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 in professional football, we can see that um, it is an industry, and it is an industry where value is mostly generated from telecasting. And since there isn't much live sports available, the telecasting industry is also go down, going down. And then the clubs are not having enough uh, revenue, which used to be coming from uh, from the telecasters, and that have affected um, 
the salaries which needs to be paid by the club, the club's um, uh, expenses are um, uh, cannot be maintained from from other revenue sources. So uh, professional football is hard hit, and um, we are uh, trying ways to find um, uh, to come out of this. And I am sure that this um, this new situation which have arisen due to the virus will have a, a correcting effect on professional football. Um, there might, when we come back to the new normal, it, it, it might be a bit different. The, the transfer, uh, the, the, the player contracts may not be as huge as this. Uh, the club's revenues may not be solely dependent on one one source like the telecasting or, 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 or uh, ticketing. We will have to diversify the revenues of the football clubs. And also, another thing that I would like the clubs and the leagues to be uh, to be looking into is, is to the women's football, how to um, uh, to develop women's football and to uh, and to generate revenue from that. So these matters are all being looked into. And um, uh, regarding that, the Asian Football Confederation and its leadership is providing sufficient support and, and, and guidelines to our member associations. And following the tracks of the K-League, we are seeing many other um, leagues coming back to life. Um, we, we have uh, also got news from many of the other member associations in Asia with their plans and the rescheduling of uh, because of the lost days from this. So I can see uh, even though we are put back by this by this virus for a, for a little while, and we don't know how long this hiatus is going to last. In any case, we can see that even with this restraints and inconveniences, we are fighting back, we are pushing back, and we are getting back on track. And um, uh, uh, again, um, uh, we have to uh, congratulate the K-League for, for, for uh, guiding, guiding the humanity itself on, on, on this line. And I, I, I thank um, the leaders of, of K-League and, and the city of Seoul for taking this initiative. Thank you very much for that remark. Yes, so K-League is uh, leading by example. Uh, thank you very much for that remark. And uh, you also talked about the economic uh, side. And uh, also, well, you kind of went uh, very fast uh, because, you know, we only have 10 minutes uh, until uh, we wrap up. Anyway, um, so now, uh, Ms. Shim, uh, you were the first uh, presenter. And then, of course, you have a long way to go still. Uh, well, what about the feedback of others? Did that help you? Yes, very much so. Uh, so COVID-19 has uh, brought uh, an unprecedented uh, challenge to all of us. So this is new to all of us, you know, from uh, spectators uh, to the facilities uh, to everything uh, involving um, professional games. You know, we have to reinvent. And of course, uh, this is not easy. It uh, will be a bumpy road ahead, uh, but uh, we have to be prepared for the new normal of uh, the post-COVID-19 era. Uh, and everybody uh, is getting ready uh, for that. So of course, I understand that the fans are frustrated about this situation, but they will understand. Yes, and uh, Mr. Ju, you're still taking notes. So I see that you're jotting down the suggestions and comments of the various speakers and panelists. Uh, how's your take on this discussion? So COVID-19 is uh, demonstrating that the world is united. We are one. We need cooperation and solidarity. And we realize this through COVID-19. And just as Mr. Jung said, since 911, we are seeing a new standard in uh, sports events. And in 2020, post-2020, we will see a new standard being set up in our society. And this will have a effect and bring about change uh, to Korea and around the world. And uh, from K-League, uh, Mr. Cho's said that uh, we have to overcome this uh, inconvenience or else it will lead to a uh, bigger tragedy if we do not uh, cope with uh, these inconveniences. So we need to overcome and we need to uh, combat these inconveniences together. Thank you very much. Uh, let us hear from uh, Mr. Lee. Yes, 
Any final comments? Yes, uh, so I would like uh, to thank uh, Seoul City uh, for uh, this summit and uh, KBO League uh, is a broadcast uh, to 130 countries and uh, it really uh, shows um, the passion of the Koreans and it uh, will be a golden opportunity uh, to uh, let everyone know of uh, the Koreans passion of course now we don't have any spectators uh, in the stadium but uh, once they can return uh, to the stadium then uh, K prevention, K-infection control uh, will set the global standards and uh, I'm sure that uh, we will lead by example. So uh, for now, we will take uh, thorough measures uh, with our infection prevention and control. And uh, we will do our best uh, to uh, be better prepared uh, for the future. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that remark. Uh, yes, uh, so you were very attentive uh, today, so I was uh, very happy to see that as well. Uh, Mr. Sho, last comments. So in the process of overcoming these difficulties, K-League, I uh, would like to thank the central government and the local government for uh, providing us with a clear direction. And so uh, those in the sports sector realize that we do indeed need to cooperate uh, with uh, the local governments. And I hope that we can strengthen our framework uh, together. And I realize that uh, the, and I thought that KBO, like the baseball federation and uh, the football federations would not have uh, a lot of cooperation, but actually I realized realize that you do, we are competing with one another and we need to catch up with baseball, but still we are working together in particular in responding and combating uh, COVID-19. I do think uh, the two of you will need to cooperate. Now, Mr. Lee, I only met you um, in studios uh, when providing commentary uh, as commentator. What's your feedback? What's your take uh, on, on the ideas today? Yes, I thought that, that uh, infection and prevention control was the job of uh, the public servants only, but uh, today was an opportunity to learn about the uh, different uh, sectors and what they're doing uh, to fight uh, COVID-19. And it's thanks to you that uh, KBO is thriving. And uh, we also have uh, Mr. Garcia, we have uh, Mr. Tong. Well, you know, they are familiar faces to me. And uh, actually, it's uh, wonderful that uh, I'm here today with them uh, speaking. So, you know, uh, Mr. Garcia, yes, uh, WBAC manager, he's the manager. And uh, actually, I was, uh, I, I'm the member of uh, the Korean tournament uh, team. So uh, whenever I visit uh, the office, I meet him and Mr. Tong when I was in Ohio. Um, there was this Mr. Nam who donated uh, to a sports facility and there is uh, this uh, like small group and we hang out together when we go to the States, yes. Anyway, so now uh, since we don't have any spectators, uh, you, you know, I'm sure that uh, all the players can hear uh, you making comments. Yeah, so I close the doors because, you know, I do not want the players uh, to listen to what I'm saying. So uh, please do not talk behind their back. Anyway, uh, now moving on to Mr. Hwang. So for the development of Korea's football, you have a lot more to do for us, right? Uh, K-League was broadcast around the world, and this, I think, can help in creating a new business, and it gives us an opportunity about uh, thinking about uh, new businesses and uh, I will like to uh, support in that area. We need uh, more players as Son Heung Min. And uh, thank you for being with us till the very end. Yes, uh, major sports are now returning. Um, so we have uh, NWSL, uh, which will return on June 27th, and uh, NPB will also return uh, with no spectators on June 19th. So that's uh, very welcoming news. However, we have to understand uh, that uh, we cannot uh, uh, 
loosen uh, disinfection and threaten the life of uh, humanity. With that, uh, we would like uh, to conclude the fifth day of Cities Against uh, COVID-19 Global Summit uh, 2020. Thank you very much.